Stars twinkling over the oasis. So for yours is the uh, atmosphere of, yeah, that pipe organ in the desert. Uh, psychedelic. Phantasmagorical atmosphere in the love chamber. Oh, oh blissed out. Uh, Sphinx. Queen, yeah, mm. reclined side by side, facing each other on the ridiculously well-swept carpet. Mm -hmm. And uh, Sphinx explains to his queen his state of affairs uh, that uh, his hash runs to Europe for personal gain. Definitely lost their thrill, yeah. Since Omar's death, his spirit has outgrown that lifestyle. But if there were a sustainable uh, source of revenue from these uh, expeditions, for a selfless higher good, uh, that would add spiritual motivation to the picture. But just to, I don't think so. I'm not doing that anymore. Mm -hmm. Queen is touched by his higher kind of love, by his growth, searching for a more compassionate life. Yeah. And uh, she embraces him, whispering, You're one of the good ones. Well, the queen's got some plans of her own huh? to create the next paradise for them together. And, uh, eye gazing forever. Eternal melting hug. And, uh, the queen envisions their journey together. Yeah. Ghazni, Kabul, Jalalabad. Halfway down the Khyber Pass, we are going to get the most magnificent <laughs> mules in Afghanistan and head up the back way. We don't do fast forwards and visas. We don't even do nations, okay? Back way, up and over the Dora Pass. And when we get to Garam Cheshma, the hot springs, <laughs> we're going naked in together, private room and just bathe and soap up and mm -hmm, love up each other. Um, and so it comes to pass. That after three days on the back of a mule. Yeah. The queen is making her glorious return to the Victorian palace of Mustaj and her handsome king. I love her. Oh, yes, Arif, I missed you so much. Um, well, with sinks trailing humbly, silently behind. And uh, oh, at the first sight of the Victorian palace, Queen rises tall in the saddle of her mule. Yeah. Teeth <laughs> sparkling. <laughs> Repaired by that missionary in there, right? Uh, oh, yeah. And that gold one in the front. He had laid a silver, a silver crescent uh, Islamic moon in it, huh? It bedazzles the entire kingdom. Yeah, especially Sharif. Huh? Well, uh, Sharif greets them on the royal balcony outside the opium smoking room and royal fucking chamber. Mm -hmm. He embraces Sphinx, uh, this enlightened Egyptian. Uh, Sphinx has got new plans for his kingdom and the imagination of Sphinx. He exudes organizational brilliance. Oh, and yeah, 
Administrative genius. Oh, Sharif, huh? Administrative genius. Well, um, hmm. He, he, he transported a centenarian corpse that was seven levels down in a labyrinth. At the bottom of the abyss, he fought hand combat against uh, Teak Turks and, and, and barricades and mullahs getting flipped over the roof and eating dirt. Lucky he got back to father, Tutankhamen. Get that jet trip. Look, one week, Sphinx drives out of Istanbul, puts it, rolls on a car ferry. One week later, bulk with the body of his guru. Hello? I could use some of that around here. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. And, oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 Sharif relaxes enough to um, also appreciate uh, how handsome, oh, how fit Sphinx uh, is. Yeah, uh, my queen has good taste. Look what she brought back home. Oh, and uh, yuck, I'm the king, huh? My bed, king size, yeah. So, uh, with a wink from uh, his queen, Sharif solemnly uh, invites Sphinx to become the uh, prime minister of Mestudistan. Sphinx. Recognized at last. Yeah. Huh. And for his royal prime minister's office. Uh, well, uh, Sharif's got a, an adjacent room. I mean, it's got the good stuff in there, okay? 1860s Victorian furniture and a pendulum clock. It's been tick tocking for centuries, huh? Wind it up and watch it. Be, be, be. And when it strikes the out, <coughs> mm. it gets your attention. Well, uh, yeah, and the room features a, uh, well, there's just convenient common, uh, common um, connecting door to the fucking bridal chamber. Well, I mean, the opium room and their bedroom. Or well, just like, you know, don't bother knocking. The opium room's rocking. Um <laughs> This calls for a celebration. Whoa. <laughs> so near sunset, oh, as the sun <clears throat> finally has gone behind a tree, I can see again. Um, yeah, King Sharif, he gathers all of the peasantry. We're talking the Borgo Pass, the Hash Yak Knack Stack Frozen Packs, uh, Yarkon Valley, Everybody get over here. Um, you remember the terrace? They, they walk. One of the earlier chapters, they had this royal parapet terrace overlooking the, the confluence of the Shitali and the Yarspur rivers. Well, anyway, if you don't remember, they had two enormous uh, field cannons made in the Ruhr Valley. Krupp cannons, huh? Yeah, last century, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, it's time <laughs> Woo! to have some fun. King Sharif lights one fuse on one of the enormous guns. And the queen lights the fuse to the other one. Oh, and um, these are 1880 fuses, uh, moldy. So, yeah, slow burning to the max. So, uh, Queen Latif introduces to the peasantry of Mustaj their new prime minister. Mm. Well, always the showman, uh, Sphinx. He dramatically stands tall and steps out on the balcony. Yeah, and uh, he addresses his people. 
Greetings, peasants of Mustudge. He knows how to pace himself. So like, let that sink in. Let the jokes roll to the back of the audience before you interrupt your own theatrical creativity. So we'll just 